If you're looking for a video on a specific topic, simply type in what you're looking for in my channel search bar. And if I have videos addressing that topic, it will take you right to them. What's up you guys, it's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. As promised, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of Kaplan's QBank. Now, the QBank is a question bank that is full of questions for pants prep and pants review that Kaplan has. And you can actually download your own QBank. I will provide a link for that in the description box below. You can access the QBank on your computer or on your phone, which is what I'm gonna do because my kids actually have an appointment to go to, a dentist appointment. So, let's go. So we're at the dentist's office and I'm gonna be doing the Kaplan like QBank right now because I need to study, right? So it says, a 25 year old woman comes to the healthcare provider for an annual exam. She's been feeling well over the past year. Her past medical and surgical histories are unremarkable. Past OB history is significant for term vaginal delivery two years ago of a male infant with spina bifida. Examination is within normal limits. The patient states that she would like to try to become pregnant within the next few months and wants to know if she needs to start taking any vitamins or medication. Which of the following supplements should this patient take? So it has folic acid four milligrams per day starting preconceptionally folic acid four milligrams per day starting in the first trimester vitamin a 10,000 IU per day starting preconceptionally vitamin A 10 milligrams IU per day starting in the first trimester or no supplements are needed so I'm gonna go with a and then let's see if I got it right explanation the correct answer is a Oh, I felt good. Like, I was really nervous about that one, that I wasn't going to get it right in front of you guys. But it says the correct answer is A. Several studies have established a relationship between folic acid and the prevention of neural tube defects. And it goes on to talk about what choice B was and what the recommended dosage is. And then choice C, why that one's incorrect. And then choice E, of course, you need to do prenatal vitamins prior to actually becoming pregnant. So no supplements at all is just incorrect. All right, let's go to the grocery store because they're done. All right, so as you can see, we're here at the grocery store and I did some light shopping, but I'm also doing some studying. And that is the beauty of having this Kaplan QBank on an app. You can take it wherever you are. And you guys can take it wherever you wanna go as well because I have partnered with Kaplan to give you all access to this app with a 15% discount. So I will leave that link in the description box below where you'll be able to access this app for 15% off. You can also go right now if you're studying for the pants or didactic gear for 20% off because they have a back to school special. But let's do this question. It says a 20 year old man is brought to the emergency department three hours after ingesting 50 tablets of 325 acetaminophen in a suicide attempt. He's nauseous and vomiting, but no other abnormalities on physical examination. His temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, blood pressure is 135 over 80, pulse is 100, and respirations are 20. Serum acetaminophen concentration is within the range of probable toxic toxicity, but serum transaminase and other hepatic markers are normal. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? So it has activated charcoal, acetylcysteine, it has phenylcycamine, activated charcoal and acetylcysteine, and gastric lavage. So I'm gonna go with D. I know that you can do activated charcoal and acetylcysteine, especially within the first eight hours, um, and I think four hours for activated charcoal. So let's go with D. Um, we'll see. The correct answer is D. Oh my gosh, guys, I learned something in didactic gear. I feel really good about myself right now. Okay, um, she's starting to get a little crazy, but it goes through and it gives you the correct answer and why the other answers are wrong. Since she's getting a little crazy, I'm gonna go pay for these really quickly and we'll be on our way. So we're here at the park. Um, had to bring the kids because they were acting up. Gotta get some of that energy off but I also need to study. So I'm doing another question and this question says, a 43 year old man with recurrent history of peptic ulcer disease associated with diarrhea and strong family history of duodenal ulcer disease is suspected of having Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Secretin is given as a rapid IV injection to test for gastronoma. Which of the following results would, sus would support the existence of gastronoma following secretin ad administration? Um, so the question answers have gastrin released from antrum, 
increased serum gastrin inhibit inhibition of gastric emptying inhibition of gastric secretion stimulation of pancreatic um hco3 secretion okay so um i'm gonna go with the increased serum gastrin that's b because i know with ZS, like Zollinger Ellison syndrome, you're supposed to have elevated levels of gastrin. Um, I don't really know about anything else with the whole where it's released type of thing, if that goes with another disease, but I'm going to do that one. So, no, not that. I'm going with increased serum gastrin. Let's see what the explanation says. Hey! <laughs> the correct answer is B. Gastrinomas are gastrin secreting tumors. Yeah, patients who have gastrinoma have high serum gastrin levels, which lead to hypersecretion of gastric and consequential duodenal and um, jejunal ulcers. So it tells you, oh, let me see that answer that I had that was that I was questioning. A, it says secrete, secretin inhibits antral release of gastrin, but it stimulates release of gastrin from gastrin tumors. Okay, so it would inhibit gastrin release from the antrum so that's something that i need to just kind of go ahead and brush up on and again it tells you what you would review um zollinger ellison syndrome so again another test question down if you do like five or ten of these a day you're gonna be a beast and you're gonna be so prepared for pants because you're gonna be like think of it five a day and there's how many days in the year that you're going to school for until you have to pass your pants i have 14 more months of this so we so got this oh i gotta go she's gotta pee um gotta go the bathroom break is done we have averted a crisis she's gonna wash her hands and then we're gonna go and actually feed these little ones because they're hungry go ahead and wash your hands but again I still need to study, I still have to get, keep up on my questions, and so I'm going to do that very shortly. Are you done, Mimi? No. Are you done? No. You're just playing right now. You're done. She's done, you guys. Yeah. Let's go. You're done. Yeah. All right, but still got my phone so we're gonna do this next question and on this question we're gonna be talking right now it says a 25 year old main man sustains multiple stab wounds to the abdomen when he's mugged while jogging, the assault takes place in the evening. He is dumped by the attackers behind the thick vegetation and is not found until the next morning, at which time exploratory surgery reveals multiple small bowel and colonic lacerations. What? All of the lacerations are repaired. In the post-op period, the patient has persistent hypertension, even though he received adequate fluid infusion and his central venous pressure is 12 millimeters per mercury. Further studies done with the help of pulmonary artery catheter revealed high cardiac output and low peripheral resistance. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Adrenal insufficiency, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, neurogenic shock, septic shock. Um, okay, so he was mugged and then he had a bunch of lacerations. Uh, let's go with hypovolemic shock. Um, I'm really just guessing on this one, but I would think since he was mugged and then he was staying over there overnight and he wasn't found until the next day, maybe he is volume depleted. Let's see if that's... So I was wrong. <laughs> the correct answer is septic shock, which also makes sense because, um, you know, he's been there overnight his small bowel was perforated so there's probably some type of infection going on but it tells you the signature of septic shock in the normal volemic patient is high cardiac output and low peripheral resistance which is what they made sure to say in the question stem so that's something that i'm going to write down and remember so that i can go back and study it for later but right now i have to go eat something all right, so the kids are fed. I haven't started eating yet, but I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I want to get into this last question that I'm going to do for you guys. It says an eight-month-old boy is brought into the office for a regular checkup. He is developing well and does not seem to have any particular problems. He's still breast breastfeeding, but has started solids at five months of age. He enjoys strained vegetables and fruits, cottage cheese, soft meats. Mother thinks that he will soon wean off the breast milk because he likes real food very much. She's interested in recommendations as to introducing other new foods in the months to come and expects him to be eating almost everything by his first birthday. On physical examination, the boy is sitting currently in his mother's lap and responds appropriately to visual and auditory stimuli. He is in the 19th, yeah, is that, oh, the 90th 
He's in the 90th and 95th percentile for height and weight, respectively. The immunizations are up to date. Which of the following foods should be avoided before the boy is one years old? So a lot of times these questions, just like they will appear on pants, has a lot of these kind of like distractors. Um, so talking about vegetables, he enjoys eating string vegetables and fruits and cottage cheese. Like we don't really need to know that. Who cares about that? Unless it's really pertaining to something that's happening with the boy. Like if he was not you know, having really excessive bowel movements or something, then we're thinking, oh, maybe he has like a lactose intolerance because he's eating cottage cheese. But since that's nothing that's happening with him, you just go on to the question and the answer is it says beans, egg yolk, fish, honey, iron fortified cereals. Of course, you're not gonna stop iron fortified cereals. You need that, they don't get iron as it is. Fish, I mean, yeah, you might think of mercury, so that's kind of like a little bit of a distractor. Egg yolk and the same thing. Um, beans, no, you need protein. But I'm gonna pick honey because you don't give honey to kids under the age of one um, because of botulism. So I'm gonna do that. I'm pretty sure about that answer. Explanation, the correct answer is D, honey. Solid foods can be introduced four to six months. Um, before this time, the risk of atopy and increased this increased and in infants are not developed mentally ready to take solids. It says honey is to be avoided in the first year of life because there's increased risk of infantile botulism. And that's something that you just learn automatically anyways in PA school. So that's it. That's Kaplan's QBank in a nutshell. You can go in there and also create your own test. You can talk about the different tasks or specific systems. So if you just want to learn about cardiology, you can just ask for cardiology questions and you have up to 99. So it may have 200 possible questions, but each test can have up to 99 questions. And if you do three to five questions a day, you're going to be a beast in cardiology when you're done. So be sure to go on over to the link that I will leave in my description box for Kaplan's QBank as well as the other resources that they have for you. You will get 15% off if you use my code, which is the down of 15. And you can also do the back to school code, which they have until September if you're studying now and you need a little extra help, which will give you 20% off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.